Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Welcome to Art on the Creek. I am so happy you're here with me today. We are in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, but this photo was taken in Centennial, one of the neighboring cities, and uh, from a location called Writer's Vista. Um, it's beautiful there and the park gets quite a bit of use. This was the scene of the crime yesterday. This was the scene of my uh, criminal plein air that just failed. But I think we need a redemption and I think we need to paint some clouds. So are you ready? Let's go do it. So here is that beautiful reference photo once again, and um, it's the sky that's beautiful. It's uh, you know it's just a picture I took from my phone, but our Colorado western skies are just so big and so expansive, and I really am so impressed by these thunder showers when they roll in because over the foothills, to the left you could still see beautiful definition of the foothills, but uh, to the right where the rain had started to fall, they were already obscuring. The thunderhead was already obscuring the higher peaks and the foothills were starting to get very dark. So I have an idea with this one. I, I had this graphite out. This is from the May sketch box. I want, it's liquid graphite and I thought that that might be kind of cool to give us some texture in some of this. Not sure where I'm going to use it yet, but I've got it out nonetheless. I just dropped some uh, purple something. I honestly don't know where it even came from on my, on my page here. So unfortunately, when I tried to lift it off, I did uh, mar the paper a little bit. So that's going to be a factor. We're just going to ignore that and we're going to keep going because I cannot waste a page. I'm going to use a three quarter stroke brush. I really like this little brush. It's a Princeton snap. Um, I like that the bristles are nice and, uh, and long and they're not they're not so long that you can't control it it's got a great uh, snap it has a great return which is exactly why I like these brushes you get a lot of good feedback from them um, usually I like saving these for gouache or for beginner watercolorists but for myself I really like them and if you don't have any Princeton snap brushes I would recommend getting at least this one because for a stroke brush it is really excellent what I'm doing is I'm wetting the entire area of the sky and I want to make sure it's nice and wet because that was one of the things that really was a struggle yesterday when we were trying to do this plein air. As soon as I got the paper wet, it dried right off. We had way too much air moving around. The winds were at 20 miles an hour and it was truly a fool's errand to try and keep going. So, but I did. Oh, I did. And it was not a fun day. So <laughs> I ended up coming home and painting something else entirely. But uh, this cloud is still very... Uh, very intriguing to me and I still want to paint it so I thought okay we can do this in the studio because today's even warmer than yesterday and those thunderheads are going to come over even sooner. So I've got the entire upper portion there above the foothills wet and I'm just using ultramarine trying to concentrate the bulk of the pigment toward the top because your sky will always be darker toward the top with the exception of a sunset. So it, you know usually as, as in life there's always an exception right? <laughs> I'm just using a paper towel to tap out a basic cloud shape where I see the brightest portions. Um, not really trying to replicate it exactly, just getting the first layer of texture in so that I can have some references to where I want to save some of that white space. Because the secret to painting clouds, you'll find many, many ways to paint it. This is only one way to do it. This is the way I'm doing it right now. You can paint clouds many, many different ways. But the secret, I think, to achieving really good cloud paintings is to create that depth of shadow. When you really get to studying clouds, you will see that they do have a lot of shadows in them and that lets you understand where that bottom of the cloud is. So these big thunderheads have a lot of fluffy, fluffy shadows in them and that's what makes them so fun to paint. In the middle pan there, I've got a little bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine, and I'm just mixing a, a gray, and I will vary that by adding more blue later to kind of blue up the gray. But that's all I'm using uh, for, the, for the sky, ultramarine, and then for the gray and the clouds, I'm using the burnt sienna mixed with that ultramarine. And if you can see over there, this is my Sennelier set of paints. So now I've got this dry, and I'm going in and I'm going to lay in some very dark layers of clouds. Now this is, this is scary. This is the part where you have to trust the process because what I'm going to do now is I've got the brush wet and I am pulling that pigment 
up and through the stormiest part of the sky. I'm going to continually play with lots and lots of water on this particular piece, which is actually why I'm not using 100% cotton watercolor paper. You can, and I've done it, but I really enjoy playing in this sketchbook because I really like using the, uh, the way that the cauliflower blooms land on the paper. I really like how this particular sketchbook reflects those. And when you use an awful lot of water on this sketchbook, you can really get some fun results. Just by varying these steps of starting with wet or dry in this case, and then getting your pigment on there, spreading it around, drying it off, adding another wash of either clean water or a very, very thin wash of watercolor, we can go ahead and continually create layers and layers of texture. And that's why I like using the Ultramarine and the Burnt Sienna because both of those paints are natural granulators. Um, you, you heard me mention in the beginning about using the graphite, the liquid graphite. I will do that toward the end. I ended up using it only on the, the foothills for texture, but it was fun and I do like the way it turned out. In the sky though, I'm taking advantage of those naturally granulating pigments and uh, really just letting those pigments uh, separate and fall in the peaks and valleys of the paper so that it can give a lot of texture to those clouds that I couldn't possibly get with a paintbrush. So you can see I've just got that paintbrush wet and I've kind of blotted it off and I'm very gently scrubbing along the edge where I had that hard line. That's another good tip for you uh, when you're watercoloring. You can always soften edges by just getting your brush wet and reactivating that pigment. So onward, I've just got uh, more and more of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna and I'm just really playing with different levels of blue and brown in there to get different tones of the gray. And now I am using that stroke brush in the direction that the rain would fall. I'm really going up and off to the right and then I'll take that paper towel and I've got it really bunched up tight to make very small puffy shapes at the end of that, that ridge line there. And um, I'm just really concentrating that pigment up in the upper right hand corner because that's where the sky is the darkest. So still going through the same process, laying on a very thin wash, tapping off what you don't want with, uh, with your paper towel. And now I'm using that very corner of this stroke brush. I haven't gone on to the round brush yet. I'm still using the stroke brush. And I'm just going to tap in, and this is wet on dry. I'm just going to tap in various little areas where I want the pigment to be available to me to manipulate later. Um, these will be the source of the shadows that I create going forward. So now you can see I've kind of just placed that very thin wash of the gray that we made with the ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Just kind of placed it in various locations, kind of across the middle of that entire cloudscape. And now in my, uh, my palette over there, I've got the thickest mix of the burnt sienna and ultramarine in the second from the top. The top one has a green and burnt sienna. I'll explain that one in a minute. And then the middle, the, if you're counting down from the top, the first one has a green, the second one has the thickest mix of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna, the third one has a little bit thinner mix, and then the one that, at the bottom has a very thin mix. So I'm just kind of using whatever uh, thickness or thinness, if you will, <laughs> of that, uh, that mix that I want to do now. Again, this is just depositing that pigment so that I can manipulate it later. Um, you could leave it like this and then make it look very graphic in nature, but I was trying to go for something that looks a little more organic. So I wanna add some of that pigment up near that corner again to help balance things. And now what I'm going to do is pull down the rain. I'm very lightly with a very thin brush pulling the, the pigment down through the sky and into the mountains because I also want that part of the mountains to be a little bit darker as well. Um, because as I said in the beginning, the, to, off to the left, there was more sunlight. So we're going to try and achieve having the mountains to the right be a little bit darker. And this is where it really gets fun. I'm putting in a darker layer of those shadows, and I am using that number eight round. It's a silver black velvet. And now I'm going to cover the painting on the left side of my journal, and I'm going to spray the paper. I want to keep this paint moving. I want to keep it alive. As soon as your watercolor dries on your paper, it won't move anymore, it's done. But I want this watercolor to have fun and I want it to play in my journal. So I'm going to be using that little squirt bottle. And in order to have this work the best, you need one with kind of a fine mist. I really like this one. Um, there's several you can get. This is just a little one that's a little bit longer than uh, a chapstick, a lip balm, or um, maybe the size of a, of a, uh, a lip gloss of some sort. 
But by keeping that paint moving, you can allow those pigments to continue to interact and play on the page. And just of note, you can see there where that uh, the mar in the paper is really trying, it's really starting to show up. And that that's my my only disappointment with this. But you know what? This is a sketchbook. It's only going to be me that's seeing it. Sketchbooks aren't meant to be perfect. Don't think that every time you paint in a sketchbook, you're going to have a perfect result because sketchbooks are for practice. And I dropped that purple in there. To be honest, I should have just left it. I knew that I could paint over it, but I don't know why it was just an immediate gut reaction was to try and blot it up. And uh, I ended up ruining the paper. So no worries. This one is just to play with. But you can see that paint move and play in that water that I've sprayed on the paper. And it's just really creating a wonderful, fun cloudscape. Now I've got a streak of gray running up there in the sky, so I'm very, very lightly tapping that off because I don't want to lift any of the sky underneath that. Wouldn't be a horrible tragedy if you did, but um, I wanted to leave that part as blue as possible. So now I'm just kind of using that tip of the towel to just reshape and, and coax the pigment where I want it. I'm going in with a little bit more and just trying to get it to uh, to land more where I want it on the clouds and I think you can see because as I'm watching this back on the video I can see it on camera you can see how those pigments have separated in the water and so we have little dots of brown and blue from those two pigments the ultramarine and the burnt sienna playing with each other in that cloud and in the rainstorm so to me that's really exciting because what happens in Colorado is we get a lot of uh, particulates that come up in the air. Uh, the way that the mountains are situated near the valley, which is where Denver sits and all the pollution, sometimes we can get something called an inversion effect where all of that pollution kind of settles down. But then the rain will come by and it will wash out the, the dust or what have you from the sky. And the clouds, when you really start looking at the colors, it's not just blue and gray. There's an awful lot of color going on in there. So I particularly wanted to use the burnt sienna here to show all of the dust and dryness that gets, that gets picked up by these big thunderheads before it can release the rain and cleanse the earth. For the foothills, now I'm going in with that stroke brush again. And the Sennelier calls this color the green, their uh, forest green. It's really a, just a very cool, deep green. You could use a phthalo green if that's what you have and you'd like to use it, or you know what would be lovely is a cobalt teal because that cobalt will really granulate as well. Um, this one, I don't have the pigment information right in front of me, so I'm not sure if the green is a, value, is a granulator, but that burnt sienna does beautiful work and I really love it. Um, I simplified this painting. If you look back at the reference photo, you'll see there's a lot of trees and everything in the foreground. I just took those out. I wanted to just focus on the foothills. And by using the stroke brush, I'm really able to suggest where the, the grasses or the trees, just the general lines and shadows of where they would fall. And I'm just able to have a good time playing with that. I'm really enjoying watching the pigments separate out. I'm just kind of tapping in different levels of pigment. Uh, so that it can have something to do on that wet paper. And as you notice right now, you can see where some of those pages, some of the places I tapped in really changed the water level. So I have to go back in and kind of smooth those out because I didn't want that kind of cauliflower bloom right there. You really can control them. I know that, uh, especially for all of you beginner watercolorists out there, so many artists will tell you, no cauliflower blooms, you need to avoid them, control your water. Well, that's true, but you can sure have fun with them too. And if you're going to get them, why not use them? That's always my philosophy. But I really enjoyed using that. And it really put an incredible amount of texture in there. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but it really has a lot of texture, which is what I was trying to achieve. And I hope that you do have those days in your sketchbook. Because the sky, I love the way that the sky turned out, and I love the contrast that I have between those rich, deep green foothills and the brightness of the sky with the storm coming over. And that's exactly what your sketchbook is for. Get out those other paints that you haven't used in a while. Get out those iridescent paints. Get out the pastels. Get out anything that you want to play with and add to your painting. You might find out a really fun new combination that you really enjoy. I'll try this graphite again. I will try it in a different order. I'll try mixing it with different pigments. I wanna see how it behaves on a lot of different things now because I really love how moody those foothills came out. So you guys, this is it. This is a fun way to do clouds. It's not the only way to do clouds, but it's the way that I wanted to show you how to do them today.
and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you really had fun and you keep having fun with your sketchbook. Well, everyone, no matter where life takes you in the days ahead, I hope that you are safe, happy, and feeling really well loved. Take care and we'll see you next week. Bye now.